Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... Careful now, men. Can't get ready. Follow me. There's, there's no one here. No one at all. I could have sworn that Esdorf was having a bath. I, I saw him through the frosted glass, then... And then on the scanner, he, he seemed to disappear. I could have sworn that... An arm seemed to come out of nowhere and hand-chopped Baxter at the back of his neck. Seconds later... Baxter! What is it? What is it? Price staggered and fell over Baxter's body. Colonel James, who'd been inspecting the bathroom, wheeled round and came back into the main cell. What the devil? Baxter! Price, what happened? Oh, are you... Seconds later, there was a slam of the cell door. Martin Esdorf was free. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. many housewives have discovered that the cleaning power of cold water Omo gives them sparkling clean results. Mrs. Joyce Whelan of East London has this to say. Now try it. And it works beautifully. I tried it on my children's clothes, on a general wash, and I noticed straight away that things were cleaner. Mm -hmm. Since then, I, I will have used nothing else but cold water Omo. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. There is too much chocolate. Too much chocolate. Double chocolate ice. Too much there is chocolate. cool chocolate inside. Milk chocolate outside. Double chocolate. Chocolate 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 ice. Double chocolate. Another great taste from Walls. Episode 6, the final episode of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel realize how they have been tricked, but manage to survive to achieve the final. Getaway. John Steed knew his bitterest and deadliest enemy was Martin Esdorf, who had sworn to complete the task for which he had been sent to England. That assignment had as its target John Steed. Esdorf had sworn to Steed's face that he would kill him, and had even boasted that he would use Steed's favorite weapon, a Brown and Thiessen Magnum, to do the crime. John Steed had left Esdorf in the now doubtful security of the Old Hill Monastery and returned to his apartment to think things out. Mrs. Peel had been investigating the habits of lizards, in particular chameleons, and thought she'd stumbled over the truth, but for the life of her she couldn't see how it was done. Meanwhile, Martin Esdorf had got away and made the cover of the warehouse of the Magnus Importing Company. That is a trouble with our people. They will underestimate the opposition. We laugh at Steed with his bowl and umbrella, but he can be more deadly than any other I have ever met on either side. You think he knows? He may suspect something. He can't know. How can he know? I don't actually know how it works myself. Well, I understand the main principle. Which... The same principle as the chameleon. A uh, humble little creature. Strange makeup. The need to hide. Oh, we've taken things a little further, that's all. A pigmented plastoid. More concentrated and spontaneous than that remarkable little lizard. One takes this concentrate, pours it on the uh, correct material. And it will assume the color and texture of the background against which it is placed. <laughs> it's a perfect camouflage. And it works. Uh, now you're free. Uh, you have everything you need. Passport, clothes. Particularly that tracks we treated with the camouflage solution. I need a gun. Oh, here's your gun. Your own camera. Ah, yeah. My old friend. Oh, but no. No. I would like a brown and decent magnum. Eh? But, but you always prefer... I would prefer on this occasion a brown and decent. Get it for me. And no arguments. <laughs> you see, it's a joke. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a private joke between me and uh, 
John Steed. In his apartment, John Steed poured himself a large drink. This case is going to put me right off vodka for good. Steed sipped a scotch and stared down at the magazine in front of him. Opposite the page which contained the article on lizards was a large, full-color reproduction showing a very attractive girl in a bikini emptying the contents of a bottle of vodka onto a man in a suit who was lying on the floor. The caption read, Runaway people escape their problems with lizard vodka. Mm. Runaway people escape. And at the bottom of the advertisement, the name and address of Magnus Importing Company. Well, I had an idea I hadn't finished with Magnus. Steed looked again at the way the girl was pouring the bottle. Then he picked up the empty one that Lubin had left in his cell. Tip it up like this. Curious angle. Hmm. Steed held it up to the light. It opens like this with an ordinary twist of the metal cap. But then... Uh, then there appears to be a second thread on the bottleneck. Come on, Steed. You should have got it by now. Ah, the thread runs the other way. Yes, twist it back and... There's a second opening. Liquor can be separated into two compartments. Vodka in the top half. Hence, says Dorf was able to give me a drink. But what was the liquid in the bottom half of this bottle? Only one way to find out, Steed. Is it Magnus should tell me that? Might, if you hurry. It's a pity about one-way streets in London. Steed, driving away from his apartment, might have seen Mrs. Peel driving to it, had they not been in separate parallel roads. While they were in the process of passing each other, Steed's telephone was ringing. Colonel James, making the call from Old Hill Monastery, sighed impatiently. He's not answering. Out then, sir? Well, of course he's out. Trouble is, he could be anywhere. It's essential that you get in touch with him? Of course it is, man. The last time this happened was Lubin. We didn't warn Ryder in time, and Ryder was killed. The time before that, we didn't let George Neville know Rostov was out. Rostov got to Neville and killed him. Now Esdorf has escaped and is intent on killing Steed. Of course we've got to find Steed. I'll try just one more time. Colonel James muttered angrily against the forces of fate in general and his own sad plight in particular and dialed Steed's number. In Steed's apartment, Mrs. Peel, just entering, left the door open and flew to answer the call. Steed? No, no, Colonel James here from Old Hill Monastery. Isn't Steed there? It doesn't seem to be. I heard the phone ringing as I rushed in. What is it, Colonel? Bad news. Couldn't be really a bit worse. You've got to find Steed, Mrs. Peel. You've got to warn him that Esdorf is out. Out? Out. Don't worry, I'll do my best, Colonel. And my best had better be better than yours. Steve? Steve, is that you back? Thank goodness, they're just found from... Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Martin Aesdorf. Steve entered the warehouse of Magnus Importing Company with a great deal of care. He moved along the line of crates to the desk where he'd last talked to Magnus. He looked around. Hmm. Yes. A crate of lizard vodka. Open. A few bottles left inside. Well, this should tell me what I want to know. Steed placed his umbrella and bowler on the desk, picked up the bottle, and gave it an expert twist in an anti-clockwise direction. The lower compartment of the bottle was full of a colorless liquid. Steed was about to pour some out when Magnus appeared from behind some crates. Steed heard the sound and swung round. Magnus leveled a gun, but Steed threw the bottle at him. It caught Magnus on the chin. Yes, well, that'll keep you quiet for a bit. But just to make sure... Steed picked up an empty crate and placed it over Magnus. Well, it looks tidy anyway. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. Steed opened another bottle of vodka from the crate and poured some liquid from the lower half over his bowler. The bowler began to turn as white as the wrapping paper it was resting on. Steed sighed. So that's it. Now you see it, now you don't. The answer at last. Time 
ticked on. An hour went by, and another. Esdorf seemed quite relaxed in Steed's apartment, but Mrs. Peel, who had not taken her eyes off the hand that held the gun, knew that there had been no chance to attack. Esdorf knew his job. He would make no ordinary assailant. <laughs> Forgive me. A sudden amusing thought you wouldn't understand. Try me. It's rather like a riddle. I was trained never to turn my back on an enemy. That when my back was turned, I was most vulnerable. And yet, if I turn my back now, I become utterly invulnerable. <laughs> I said you wouldn't understand. Oh, but I do. Oh, come now. Like a chameleon, merging with the background. The ninth degree in camouflage. Now, I am impressed. It must be just the back of you that's treated with, uh, well, whatever it is. Uh, I'm very impressed. Steve's taste obviously extends beyond the more bourgeois trappings of life. You look like you do, and you have a brain. <laughs> Remarkable. Shh. Is she outside the door? Come here. Stand in front of me. Feel this gun in your ribs. One move, and it shall last. Steve, <laughs> Esso! There's no one there. Come here, you! Esdorf, with amazing strength, grabbed Mrs. Peel and yanked her to her feet, pressing the gun to her head this time. All right, Steed. It's you or this delectable creature. Come on, show yourself. Come on! Pleasure, here I am. Steve? Steve, where did you spring from? They forgot to dispose of Lubin's duffel coat. I put it on back to front. Uh, put the kettle on for a cup of tea, will you please, Mrs. Peel? Later, Mrs. Peel, entering from the kitchen, couldn't see Steed at all. She put the tray down impatiently and said, Steed? Steed, where are you? Over here. Now, where's over here? You aren't still playing games with that silly coat, are you? Of course not. I'm over here behind the curtains, fixing the window. I'd like to give me a hand. <sighs> uh, it's a very small chair. You'll have to stand very close. Come on up. <sighs> ah, that's better. Now, just hold this, will you? That's it. You've got very warm hands, Mrs. Peel. Warm hands, cold heart. Steed, I think we need a holiday. Why not? Anything to uh, get away together. Draw the curtains, Mrs. Peel. It's so cozy in here. In my day, hard, harsh rubbing was the way to shift grease off my old cold stove. What's changed? What's changed? Surfaces have changed. They can't take hard rubbing. They need Handy Andy care. Modern stoves and all modern surfaces need Handy Andy liquid cleaner with active ammonia. Use Handy Andy straight from the bottle. It lifts dirt without hard rubbing or scratching. Surfaces have changed. It's time I changed to Handy Andy, too. The cleaning power of cold water Omo gives you the superb cleanness you want from a washing powder. Listen to Mrs. Baxter of Claremont. It really is good. You know, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, really, that, that it could be so good, you know. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. Yeah!